So Elegoo was nice enough to send over their new Saturn 3 12K printer. And to save you some time on unboxing, here's everything out of the box. But just like with all the Elegoo printers, it is nicely packed. The build plate on this looks pretty much identical to the one on the Saturn 2. Besides, if you look at the build surface itself, it's laser engraved this new pattern. They are still using a thick piece of paper for leveling, which definitely does work, but I have seen other resin printers with auto leveling now. And just like all Elegoo printers, it comes with a toolkit with just about everything you need to get started, like these latex gloves, which aren't really the best to use with resin you're going to want to get some nitrile gloves instead. It is nice that it comes with all the allen keys you'll need for this printer, along with extra bolts. It does come with a USB drive, and you'll be putting all your files on this for printing. There's also a plastic scraper, which comes in really handy for cleaning, along with a metal scraper to get your prints off the build plate. But that plastic scraper is perfect for removing failed prints, which I'll be showing how to do later in this video. There's also this little activated charcoal air filter that's actually powered by USB, and it plugs in right here. You just need to remove this little rubber piece, and you kind of just plug it in, and this should cut down on the resin smell, but I don't really notice much change with or without it. And the whole printer is just powered by this power brick. It also comes with a couple of filters so you can filter your resin when pouring it back into the bottle after using it. But I definitely suggest buying a lot more of these. And my printer came with a free license to Voxel Dance Tango. And this is one of the slicers you can use with this printer. And I don't know if this comes with every printer, seeing that this is a review unit that was sent over to me. That being said, you're not locked into just one slicer. So you can also use Chitu Box or Lychee Slicer. But anyways, the last thing in the box are just a few masks, which like the gloves are pretty much useless. And really, you're going to want something like this if you don't have a proper ventilation setup. But anyways, back to the printer itself, we need to move this arm up so we can finish setting up the printer. And to do this, we need to power on the machine just by going over to Tools, Manual, and start pushing up to move it up 10 millimeters at a time. And it's definitely not the fastest moving thing in the world, but it will get there. And once it moves up enough, I can remove the vat by just undoing the two thumb screws on either side. And if you're doing this, keep in mind these do come completely out, so try not to lose them. And underneath the vat, you'll find the 12K screen. It has a protective sheet on it that you need to remove. And this is isn't just a bare screen. It basically has a tempered glass screen protector on it, so this should protect you from scratches or any damage to the actual screen itself. And don't forget to remove the protective film on the bottom of the vat as well. And I've seen a lot of people forget to do this, and wondering why prints weren't coming out as good as they should. When it comes to leveling the build plate, there are just two screws you need to loosen, and once they're loose you'll see the build plate kind of drop. And this is pretty much just a ball joint, and Elegoo has been using the same design on just about all of its printers. So with that all loosened up and the vat off, you can just put the leveling card on the screen, and then just home the machine. And honestly, you don't really have to do this all that often. But with that being said, and because this is a ball joint design, it's a little bit easier to knock it out of alignment if you have hard to remove models from it. And because it's on a ball joint, it can twist. So when you're aligning everything, just make sure it's as square as possible. But once you have everything aligned, you just need to put a little pressure onto it and lock it in place. And to make sure everything is set right, you need to pull on the leveling card and feel resistance on it. But if it's completely pinned in place, you can move the Z axis up a little bit and then save your Z offset. So leveling is done. And we need to move the build plate up to put the vat back on. When it comes to the vat, it's a pretty solid setup, and it even has a max level mark on the back, so you don't accidentally overfill this with resin. But it'd be a lot more helpful if it had actual milliliter marks, so I knew how much was in my vat. That way I can be 100% sure I can actually print whatever I'm making. But one cool feature I haven't seen on other printers is this hole in the back of the enclosure that you can hook up to ventilation, and this lines up with the charcoal filter as well. But overall, this printer looks very familiar, because it's using just about all the same parts as the Saturn II. And here they are side by side, and I bet you can't tell them apart. And even with the covers removed, they look pretty much exactly the same besides the build plates. Like I said at the beginning, the Saturn 3 has a etched in design, and the Saturn 2 didn't. But I've added a magnetic plate from Wham Bam to make getting parts off much easier. And honestly, I've put these on every single one of my resin printers. But they're definitely an investment up front, because they're not cheap. But to me, they're totally worth it not having to fight with getting parts off of your build plate, and risk damaging your build plate in the process. But anyways, I'm assuming they're reusing everything from the Saturn 2 to save costs, and just upgrading the internals like upgrading the screen from an 8K screen to a 12K and using a completely different light source system. And at the time of shooting this video, there's only a $50 price difference between the two. So Elegoo sent over a few different types of resin with this printer, some interesting looking color changing resin, and some ABS like. I thought the color changing resin was more interesting, so we're going to use that. And this is Elegoo resin that I'm using, but you're not limited to just their brand. And you can use just about any type of UV resin you want. So like the basic stuff that I have here from Elegoo, or if you're doing jewelry design, you could do castable resins. So you can print these highly detailed designs and do a process called lost wax casting and turn them into solid metal. 
And then there's engineering type resins, which can be tough, rigid, flexible, or even impact resistant. So definitely a lot of options when it comes to printing with resin. So after all of that, let's actually start our first print. And this USB drive has a test file of a rook on it, so we'll start that up. And whenever you're printing, make sure to keep your enclosure on. This will keep most of the resin fumes inside and any unwanted UV light out. And on the front display of the machine, you can see the current layer that it's working on, along with the estimated time, how long it's been going for, and the total amount of layers. You can also look at and edit some of the settings. And because this was a pre-sliced file, I had no idea what the settings were until right now. And that 25 second bottom exposure time is pretty iffy. And just like what I thought, this print failed. But at least for the video's sake, this is actually a good thing. And sometimes prints just fail for whatever reason. And you have to be able to clean it out and fix it. So let me show you how I fix this and get back to printing as quick as I can. I make sure to do all of my work on a silicone mat for easy cleanup. I use these alcohol wipes along with disposable shop towels for all of the resin cleanup. And anytime you're dealing with resin, make sure you're wearing your gloves and mask. The first thing I do is take off my build plate and clean it. This way I know there's no debris from failed prints on it. And if you just leave it on the printer itself and remove the vat, it's going to drip on your screen. And there we go. It's all clean and I can put it to the side. And then I'm just going to clean up my mat a little bit. And the great thing about using a silicone mat, nothing sticks to it. So if this resin did cure, I could just peel it off. But I really don't want to deal with that right now. And I need this area to be clean to work on the next step because we really don't want uncured resin on the bottom of our vat. And before we take the vat off, we want to go into tools and tank clean. This is going to turn on your UV light and cure a thin layer of resin across the entire bottom of the vat. So if you have a lot of failed parts or a lot of small parts that are going to be really hard to get off, all of it's going to fuse together now into a giant sheet. We are going to pour all of our resin back into the bottle using a funnel, but we want to make sure we're filtering it as well, just in case it has any failed print debris in it. And that's why I said you should buy more of these filters, because anytime you change out resins, you're going to want to do this. And with most of the resin out, you can see where the failed print is, along with all the area that was cured with the tank clean. But there's still actually a lot of resin in here that you can save. And this is where that plastic scraper comes in really handy. As you can see, I can scrape off the resin without damaging or scratching the film on the vat. And like I was saying before, you can recover a lot of resin that you would otherwise be wasting. And with that done, we could take a better look at our failed print, and it looks like it just popped off the build plate. It's probably from the 25 second burn-in period for the bottom layers, just not being long enough for it to get a proper grip on the build plate and stick the whole time. But luckily, cleaning this off now is pretty easy. Make sure the back of your knuckles are clean, or just switch out your gloves in general, and just slightly push up on the underside of the vat. And now with it released on one side, you can take your plastic scraper and get underneath it and peel it off. So with that all done, you can put everything back together, fill it back up with resin, and start printing again. And I'm going to print the same file again, just changing the bottom exposure to 40 seconds instead of 25. And honestly, 40 seconds is a bit high for most basic resins, but I know for sure it's going to stick. And I did check on it about an hour and a half later, and you can see that it is stuck to the build plate. And of course, there's much better ways to figure out what settings to use with your resin. And normally, the manufacturer will have some suggested settings that you can at least start with. But there's also test files you can print like this one that you can see how everything is changing based on your settings and tune things accordingly. And once I find the best settings, I write it all down on the back and keep this. And the best part, it normally takes around 15 minutes to make one of these. Another helpful test file is the cones of calibration. And your goal with this is to have one side succeed and the other side fail. And this will help you gauge if you're over or under exposing your resin. And I'll have links to these calibration files in my description, along with links to everything else I use in the video. Well, after three hours and 21 minutes, our rook is done, and I need to get it off this build plate using the scraper and a little help from a mallet. And as long as you have the scraper pretty flat on the surface, this should come off with a pretty light tap. We do need to clean off the rook. It's covered in uncured resin. So I'm going to drop it into my wash station, which is full of 99% alcohol. And this is a pretty nice setup that is also relatively cheap. And all I need to do is set a timer and let it do its thing. And this basically just agitates the liquid in one direction for half the time and then does it the other direction. And once that's all done, we'll have a fully clean part. But before I can cure this for this last step, I do need to let it completely dry. Because if I leave any of this alcohol on here and start curing it, it will actually start turning white and crusty in spots. And this is my UV cure setup. It actually comes with the wash station. And it has this yellow enclosure, so you don't blind yourself when using it. It also has the same dial control as the other unit. And with the part all dried off after the cleaning, you can see that it has more of a matte finish now. So this is perfect for curing now. And all I need to do is put it on the turntable, put the lid back on, and start it up. And it's nice that it has UV lights underneath the turntable as well. And after a few minutes in the UV chamber, this is all done. And as you can see, this print came out really nice. And it has no visible layer lines whatsoever. And the only real problem I can see is the very bottom, where I turned up the exposure time. And because I printed this in a color-changing resin, I'm going to use a heat gun to heat it up, and you can see that it turns 
turns purple, which is definitely pretty interesting, but I don't see any practical uses for this. At least nothing I can think of. So if you have any ideas how you can use this material, let me know in the comments. But other than the material, this is a very simple print, and honestly doesn't really show off the 12K-ness of this printer. So right after this, I printed some detailed miniatures, which as you can see, came out looking very nice. Well, besides the parts on these that broke, because I dropped a box on top of them. But I'm definitely happy with the quality of these, especially with how small they are. But I wasn't seeing the details that I really wanted to see out of a 12K printer, so I printed something with more details that was a bit bigger. And this came out really nice, and you could see every little texture on this, along with all the features looking really sharp. And again, with no visible layers whatsoever, you can even clearly see the weave in the fabric. And the other nice thing about this model is it's hollow, so you're not wasting a ton of resin to make it. I also use the same color changing resin to print this. I also made some chunky rings that have a lot of details to them that came out looking really nice as well. I was also able to print an entire custom D&D party, along with custom bases, all at one time. And this only took three hours to print. So this is definitely a very capable printer, especially at a price point of only $400. If you are in the market for getting a new resin 3D printer, you might want to check out this one. Well, I think that's it for this video, and I went over a lot of information. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And I do try to reply to all of my comments on my videos. Well, other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.